On this video, let's talk about a very specific series called the geometric series. Now we have looked at a geometric sequence. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the terms in a geometric sequence and we're going to add them up, creating a geometric series. So our geometric series can look like either of these two forms where A is the first term and R is the common ratio that we're multiplying to get each subsequent term. So R is the common ratio. You can come up with that common ratio by noticing the pattern in the terms or by taking the A sub K term and dividing by the previous term, a sub k minus 1. So what the partial sums look like, and I'm going to go through this proof very quickly, what the partial sums look like is this. So if we take s sub n, it's going to be the sum of the first, uh, if, if k starts at 0, it's going to be the sum of the first n terms, but that's why we end at n minus 1 based on the sequence of terms starting at 0. So the sum of the first n terms looks like that. When we multiply by r, and this is setting us up for the proof to determine what this sequence or what the series converges to the sequence of partial sums converges to if it does so we multiply by r when we multiply by r what that does is it just and i wrote it shifted because i want to subtract these so when we multiply each partial sum when we multiply the s sub n partial sum by r each term goes up by one power on r if we subtract those two so envision putting you know, we're taking these and we're literally subtracting these two equations. When we subtract those two equations, we end up with s sub n minus r of s sub n equals a minus a times r, so r to the nth. And then we can factor out the s sub n and we can solve for it. And we end up with this expression for s sub n, a times 1 minus r, the common ratio to the nth power, all divided by 1 minus r. Now, if we break down the cases, because what we want to know now is what is going to happen in order to determine convergence, we want to take the limit as n approaches infinity of these partial sums. Because we know from what we've talked about with series, we know that a series is going to converge. The series converges if the sequence of partial sums converges. That's what we know about series. So if the sequence of partial sums is converging, then the limit of those partial sums is approaching a finite value. So this is really the key here in this proof. We want to figure out for what values of r would this limit have a finite value. So what we can do is we can break it down into the cases that I have listed here. If r is actually equal to 1, so if we just go back and we think of r equaling 1 up here in the sequence of the partial uh, sequence of the partial sums. If r was equal to 1, then the partial sums would be just adding up n a's. And so that's going to approach infinity. Actually, I guess it could be approaching negative infinity. It depends on if a is positive or negative, but it is going to be infinite. If r is negative 1, then we're actually going to be getting oscillation between 0 and a. And we could show that with the partial sums um, by plugging in r equals negative 1. We could show that right there. If we have the third case where the absolute value of r is less than 1, then we can take a look right here at this s sub n, this nth partial sum. If the absolute value of r is less than 1, then this piece right here is going to approach 0, and the partial sums are going to approach a over 1 minus r, which is the first term divided by 1 minus that common ratio. And if the absolute value of r is greater than 1, then the, the partials, the the limit of the partial sums is not going to exist because this r sub n, if r is greater than 1, that is not going to exist. There's a variety of things that could happen there if our ratio is greater than 1 in absolute value, depending on the sign, positive, negative, and so forth. But we get a limit of the partial sums that does not exist. So to summarize our geometric series, our geometric series will converge if the common ratio in absolute value is less than 1, and it will diverge if the common ratio in absolute value is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so I have summarized that right here at the top of our page, our geometric series. We've worked with geometric sequences. Now let's take a look at some geometric series. And A is going to be indicated by our first term, or A is going to represent the first term in the geometric series, and R is going to be that common ratio. Now I wrote this geometric series with K equals 0 as the starting place on the index, but that can be shifted around. It could be 1, and this might say K minus 1 right here. Um, all of that is... 
you know, indices are a bit irrelevant, right? A bit arbitrary and we can adjust them as needed. So when we write out our geometric series or formula, you will see me often say this, that A is the first term, R is the common ratio. We know that we're gonna converge if that common ratio is less than one in absolute value and we will converge to the first term over one minus that common ratio. And we will diverge if that common ratio in absolute value is greater than or equal to one. All right, let's take a look. So let's look at this first one. We're going to look at several actually in this video. So let's take a look at this first one. Determine if the following geometric series converge or diverge. If they converge, let's find the sum. So we can see right here that this is definitely a geometric series. We can see that each time we are multiplying by one half. And so if I were to write this out, k equals one, I'm going to, I'm going to actually start this one at one, k equals one, and we have one half to the k. Uh, you could also adjust that if you wanted to. You could say you could start that at zero and so forth. I'm not going to play around with indices on this video. Let's just talk about convergence or divergence on this video. So here we can see very clearly that the common ratio is one half, which we don't need to put the absolute value on it, but just to be consistent with our formula, the absolute value of one half, of course, is just one half, which is less than one. So we know right away that we have convergence. Not only do we have convergence, but we will know exactly what we're going to converge to. It's going to converge to A over 1 minus R. Let's get that back on the screen up there. It's going to converge to A over 1 minus R. And so we just need to identify the first term in this series. And we can see the first term just in the way it was given, 1 half. Or if it had been given this way, we would plug in 1 and see that the first term is 1 half. So we're going to be at 1 half over 1 minus one half, which of course is just one half over one half, and this converges to one. All right, let's take a look at another one. So here we go. We've got another geometric series. Let's write this guy out just a little bit differently. I see a negative k on the exponent right there, so we're taking a series from k equals zero to infinity. This is one over e to the k. If I were to write out the first couple of terms, this is going to be one over one, so that's going to be one plus 1 over e, plus 1 over e squared, plus so on and so forth. So we can see that the first term is 1, and the common ratio is 1 over e. We wouldn't even really need to worry about that first term uh, if it was not converging, so I probably should have looked at the common ratio first. So just as a note, 1 over e is approximately 1 over 2.718. Now the reason I'm writing that is because we want to know if that's less than 1, and that is definitely less than 1. So we know that we're going to be converging, and we know that we converge to, remember that we converge to a over 1 minus r. So since we're converging to a over 1 minus r, that's 1 over 1 minus 1 over e. And that is going to be, <clears throat> you know, just a little algebra here. Let's just multiply top and bottom by that common denominator of e, and we end up with e over e minus 1. So we're definitely converging, and we're converging to that value. So this entire sum, it's kind of interesting, this entire sum, we're adding up an infinite number of numbers, and they converge to this finite value. All right, let's look at another one. So here we've got three, example three here, and on this one, we could write out a couple of terms, but I'm noticing that here is my common ratio. Notice the index is starting at 6, so our first term will be whatever it is when k equals 6. But notice on this one that the common ratio is negative pi over 2. We should always look at that common ratio first to determine convergence or divergence. So in absolute value, that of course is pi over 2, which would be approximately 3.14 over 2. That is greater than 1. I don't have to go much further because this tells me right away by geometric series <clears throat> and our proof at the beginning that this is diverging. All right, let's look at another one. So here we've got um, 7 times negative 0.3 to the k. If we wanted to, we could think of that as 7 times negative 3 tenths if we prefer the fraction to the decimal. Either way, doesn't matter. We can see that the common ratio, again, look for that common ratio first, is negative 0.3 or negative 3 tenths, which definitely, when we take the absolute value of that, will be 
three tenths, which is less than one. So we know we have convergence. We know we have convergence. We know we're going to converge to A over 1 minus R. So we just need to figure out what is the first term. And so the first term is, in this case, we look at the index. The index is at starting at 1. So the first term is going to be 7 times negative 0.3 to the first power. Or we could say 7 times negative 3 tenths or negative 21 over 10 or negative uh, that would be 2.1. Now, I don't have my calculator right in front of me, so I'm going to just do this with fractions. And so you could do it with decimals or fractions. If my lab is asking you for your um, answer in fractions, do it in fractions. If you're asked for the answer in decimals, then of course do it in decimals. And uh, if needed, round to the appropriate decimals. So in this case, we're going to do it in fractions, negative 21 over 10. 1 minus, now remember our r value was negative 3 tenths. So of course we have to be careful of signs here when we're coming up with the value that this sum converges to. We know it converges, but what it converges to we want to be careful. So we get uh, 1 plus 3 tenths, so negative 21 over 10, and then this becomes 13 over 10, which of course is negative 21 over 10 times 10 over 13, and we are converging to negative 21 over 13. And so we are getting convergence, and we're converging to negative 21 over 13. So this infinite sum of numbers is going to actually be a negative value, negative 21 over 13. All right, now remember the first term in the series is negative, so hopefully that makes sense. The first term is negative, and the terms in size are going to get ever smaller as we're adding up this infinite sum. And so as we're adding up this infinite sum and we're adding smaller and smaller magnitudes, adding and subtracting smaller and smaller magnitudes, um, that first term is actually dominating and giving us that negative. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Let's see how many we can get on this video. Probably get. We'll probably get a couple more. Okay, let's take a look at this one. So we've got, now we've got some exponent stuff happening here. And so it, this is not A times R to the K right now. And so I want to get it into a form that looks like that so I can see, I can visualize the common ratio. There's a few ways to do that. You could just write out the first few terms. Or I think in this case, we're going to practice a little algebra and we're going to manipulate the exponents. So here I'm going to say, okay, I've got that negative 4 to the 3K. So that's negative 4 to the third to the K. And on the bottom, that's 5 to the K and 5 to the negative 1. Just using rules of exponents. When you, um, when you multiply two exponents together, or when you raise a power to a power, you're multiplying the two exponents together. So if you have a multiplication, you could write it that way. Of course, here I'm just using that rule of when you multiply two of the same base together, you add the exponent. So I'm going the opposite direction and separating the exponents. Okay, so k equals 0 to infinity. Negative 4 to the third, that's negative 64 to the k. On the bottom, we have 5 times 5 to the k times 5 to the negative 1. Let's bring that 5 to the negative 1 up. 5 to the negative 1, we become 5 to the positive 1 on the top. And we've got k equals 0 to infinity, the summation of k equals 0 to infinity. And we've got 5 times, now that these are both to the k, we can write that as the common ratio negative 64 fifths to the k. And we can see right there that r is negative 64 over 5, which of course in absolute value, positive 64 fifths, which is greater than 1, and this tells me I have divergence. Okay, I'm going to skip number 6. Number 6 is going to be similar, so let's just skip over number 6. And let's go to, actually, no, we'll do number six. We'll do one more like this, um, and then and then we'll skip to our last example. Okay, so on this one, we've got, again, with the exponents, k equals zero to infinity. I'm going to write that as nine to the second, nine to the negative k, four to the k, four to the negative one, and I'm going to drop my negatives down. I'm going to make that 81 and we're going to have 4 to the k, and then I'm going to drop down the 4 to the 1, so that becomes 4, and 9 to the k. And this was from k equals 0 to infinity. So we end up with 81 fourths 
times four ninths to the K. And we can identify right here, we can see that our R is going to be four ninths. So of course, an absolute value that is just four ninths, which is less than one. So we know right away we've got convergence. We're going to converge to A over one minus R. So A, our first term. So let's just think about our index. So again, we have to think about for the first term, where does the index start? The index starts at zero. So when K equals zero, the first term is going to be 81 over 4 times, and then you get 4 ninths to the 0, which is 1. So the first term is 81 fourths. So we're going to use those two. Actually, the common ratio was inside the absolute value. It, we do need to be careful of the sign. It was positive here, though. So the common, the common ratio is 4 ninths. The first term is 81 fourths. So 81 fourths over 1 minus 4 ninths. So we get 81 fourths. Force. Again, I'm going to work in decimals um, and give an exact answer here. So that is going to be uh, 5 ninths. So we get 81 fourths times 9 fifths. Multiply that together. 729 over 20. And we've got convergence, and that is what we're converging to. Okay. Let's go ahead, and this is actually our seventh example. Let's go ahead and jump to one more example, and let's look at a repeating decimal. And so on this one, when we have a repeating decimal, so 1.252525525, this will create <clears throat> a geometric series. It's going to be 1 plus 0.25. Two five, two five, two well, two five, and so on. And so this is actually one plus. We've got zero point two five plus zero point zero zero two five plus zero point zero 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 two five, and so on and so forth. So this ends up being one plus. This is actually twenty five times one over. 100 and this is going to be 25 over 1 over 100 squared. Uh, I had to pause for a second there and double double check that I had uh, the right number of decimals. So yes, this is 1 over 100 squared plus and then we have 25 1 over 100 cubed, and so on and so forth. Since we're moving the decimal two spots, we're using a 1 over 100 um, multiple each time. We're multiplying by another 1 over 100, or dividing by 100 each time to move that decimal two more places out. So this is a definitely a geometric series, and this is going to be 25. <clears throat> times 1 over 100 to the k. And I'll go ahead and start my k at 1. Of course, you can play around with the index, but I do see that that's what's happening here. This is to the first power. Each time I'm multiplying by an addition, each time I'm multiplying the terms by an additional 1 over 100, that common ratio is 1 over 100. Each time we're moving that decimal two more places out, and we're starting at that 25 over 100. So we also notice here that there was the 1, and I just pulled that out as the front. That was the whole number. That was not part of the repeating decimal. So I pulled that out to the front. So that is not actually part of my series. But my series, of course, once I find if this converges, then I will have 1 plus whatever that converges to as my answer for the equivalent way to write 1.25 repeating. So this is our geometric series, we can see right here that my common ratio is 1 over 100, which of course in absolute value is less than 1. So we know that it does in fact converge. What does it converge to? Well, it's going to converge to A over 1 minus R, as long as we know what A is, which is always the first term. So A is our first term. So what is our first term? Well, again, when we look at first terms, we think about where the index starts. And the first term, we can see the first term here too. But the first term is going to be 25 times 1 over 100, or the equivalent decimal, which would be 0.25. So this is definitely converging. We still have that 1. 
So of course, don't forget that one. So we have one plus, and then we're gonna have a over one minus r. So our a value, our first term was 25 over 100. Again, I'm gonna work with the decimals over one minus one over 100. Let's zoom in on that. So that's gonna be one plus, we're gonna get 25 over 100 divided by 99 over 100. And this is equivalent to one plus 25 over 99 which is 1 and 25 99ths. And so we have just shown that this repeating decimal is equivalent to the fraction 1 and 25 99ths when we think of it in its geometric series form and apply our properties of geometric series. All right. So give these geometric series a try. They are, um, they're kind of fun. I like them. They're kind of fun little puzzles to play with here.